Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Leat Dasa, and I work as an immunology team leader at Cytorizen. At Cytorizen, we use molecular data to drive decisions regarding drugs life cycle. We do that using our computational disease models, and our customers include some of the largest pharma companies in the world. Imagine you have to take a decision, a hundreds of millions of dollars decision regarding a drug you're developing. You may be facing questions like, what are the dra other drugs are relevant for the disease I'm working on? Or um, how does my drug compare to other drugs, to other standard of care drugs within a given disease? To answer these questions, you'd probably want to look at all the relevant data that is there and see what you can learn from it. And it's not like we're missing data, right? There's tons of data. The hard thing is to get insight out of it efficiently. And this is what we do at Cytorizen. At Cytorizen, we're bridging this data insight gap using our core technology, disease models. So you can think of our disease models as a navigation app for a disease. Where, and, we're building, and we're building these disease models using multiple omics data set and data types, mostly um, bulk RNA sequencing and single cell sequencing data. And underlining this navigation app, this disease model, are layers and layers of information that together uncover the entire mechanistic overview of the disease. So what we're doing is deconvolving bulk data to get the cellular composition of the, within the tissue. Uh, we can also look at the cell state and see the regulatory programs behind each and every cell. We're bringing time into the picture and seeing how the disease is progressing and changing over time. And having all this data at hand and being able to navigate between all these layers of information is exactly what we're doing as part of our disease models. Um, and these disease models, these navigation app, app can actually help you get a better, a deep understanding of an indication. And it's not just one indication, because our disease models can be used together for systematic comparisons between, disease, between diseases and between different treatments. And these systematic comparisons are basically a synthetic method for holding trials. In synthetic trials, we'd often choose to focus on either just one asset, one drug, and look at different indications to prioritize the most relevant indication for this drug. This would be a basket synthetic trial. And another option would be to focus on one indication and compare standard of care treatments within this indication to our clients' uh, drugs and assets. This would be an umbrella synthetic trial. Now imagine stepping into this library of modeled diseases where you have dozens of models that already exist. And you can just take off the shelf the relevant models that you're interested in and you want to compare them. This is what we uh, do at Cyrus. This is the synthetic trials we're delivering. I want to give you an example for that. So in this project, our goal was to identify, uh, to prioritize and match the most relevant indication for a CCR6 inhibitor treatment. Now we started with a wide screening of close to 200 diseases and we wanted to narrow it down, right? And so for that we used our NLP tools and cell-specific gene expression data and eventually we, we were able to narrow it down to four top uh, prioritized indications. In these indications, we used our uh, complex disease models to dive deeper and find the most promising indication for CCR6 uh, treatment. Now, what we were interested in is actually an indication where 
breaking the axis between the receptor and the ligand, the CCR6 receptor and its ligand CCL20 will disrupt the immune cell infiltration to the tissue, will disrupt the inflammation in the tissue. What you can see here uh, in the axis are the correlation levels between the receptor and cell infiltration and the ligand in cell infiltration. And you can see here three different patterns that we found within our four, within the four uh, models we focused on. And while in three of these patterns we see either no correlation at all to either the receptor or the ligand, or only correlation between the, the receptor and immune cell in infiltration, only in ulcerative colitis did we see a correlation between both the receptor and the ligand to, cell, to, to immune cell infiltration, rendering it as the top prioritized um, indication for a CCR6 inhibitor treatment. The outcome of this project was that our recommendation had an important role in Pfizer's decision to carry on with ulcerative colitis as, uh, as the indication for, for the CCR6 inhibitor. And currently, this inhibitor is on a phase one clinical trial. So this is what we do at Cytorizin. This is the type of synthetic trials we're holding at Cytorizin. And, but, but this is just one use case out of many. Our tools are relevant throughout the entire drug's life cycle. So as early as the discovery stage where we can identify relevant targets or, uh, or check for target validation, to a later on stage of drug development where we can integrate our clients' data to benchmark their drug to standard of care treatments or to dig deeper into the mode of action of this drug. Just think how easy it is using our disease models to get fast and accurate um, results for your questions. And lastly, uh, at the, at the post-market stage, we can also be part of your, asset, of your asset management by revealing relevant drug combinations or um, identifying response, response biomarkers. So now I want to give you another example. Usually in a conventional drug analysis, you'd look at two different groups, a placebo group and a treatment group. And look for, and you'd look for a clinical response, right? But what happens if you don't find it, if you don't see this clinical response, if there's no clear difference between the groups? In this case, we're here to identify predictive biomarkers of response. And how do we do that? So, as part of our disease models, we have, we're, we're modeling networks as well. And in our, in our networks, we're using patients' baseline data to model the entire network of connections between genes and between cells and understand where are the hubs of connections, where are the, the most central and most important interactions within this disease. Um, and this is, the, this is our, ne our reference network that is part of each of our disease models. At this point, we can take this reference network and start perturbing it with patients' data, with uh, treated uh, samples, and see which of these important hubs, important connections, starts breaking down once we're adding res responders' data. Um, and eventually using this approach, so using this approach is a huge advantage because it allows you to uh, look at, to examine small cohorts using our um, reference network. And what you'd get from this sort of analysis is the distinct molecular feature of the responders. And that way we'd be, we'd be able to identify uh, the specific biomarkers of response. So by now, you should have a clear understanding of what our disease models are, 
and what they can be used for. But how do we deliver them to our clients? So first of all, our disease models are completely dynamic, and it's important to understand it because we're not just delivering a constant disease models. They keep on evolving. We keep on constantly expanding the breadth of our model to diseases, uh, expanding our library of model to diseases and modeling more and more diseases. We keep on, uh, we constantly keep on growing the depth of model of modeled feature, adding more and more data types. And we're constantly evolving the technology and the algorithms behind our disease models. So having these dynamic disease models at hand as the interface, as the infrastructure, we empower people to ask big questions. How do we do that? We give our clients access to our disease models. And we're doing this through an API where bioinformaticians can draw the analyzed data that is behind our disease models and work with it. We do it with our platform where biologists can look at all the visualized results behind our disease models. And I want to give you a quick glimpse at this um, uh, platform we have. So using this platform, we can choose whatever tissues and diseases we're interested in. We can then go on and look at the meta-analysis that integrates all the relevant data that is there. We can look at different uh, the cell composition between different groups and compare them. We can look at app-regulated genes and see what happens to them post-treatment. And we can look at ranking criteria and compare between different indications that we're interested in. So this video I just show you, showed you is not, is not just a mock-up. It's a demonstration of our already existing platform. And our, uh, th that is part of our subscription, subscription program as well as our API. And on top of that, we can also suggest our clients a specialized service where our teams of scientists can integrate their data with our disease models to give them accurate answers to their questions in mind for their specific assets. Um, so, so how do we deliver synthetic trials? It's actually up to our clients. They can choose the specific manner, the specific way they want to work with our tools with our si and with our systems. Uh, they can choose to, scientists can choose to work with our platforms, managers can choose to work with our scientists, with our groups of scientists. It's up to your choice. And you can mix and match according to the specific question you have in mind each time. Um, and, and eventually what you're getting is actually an informed scientific portfolio management. So when we started Cytorizen, we wanted to bring biological research to a new era. And together with our customers and with our partners, we're connecting between the lab and the clinics, between the molecular features and the clinical endpoint to eventually narrow down this data insight gap. Thank you. <laughs>